<laughs> so the last time we identified the stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? Martin family. Who else? <laughs> the insurance company. And the company. The there they go, the company and the owners, right? So we already suggested that better for society was, overall, was that the Martin family would get, get all of their entitlements. So we said that they would get pension payment, health care, right? What was the other thing? Medical. Hmm? Death benefit. Death benefit. Okay, these things. Do you understand these payments? <coughs> pension, health care, insurance, debt benefit. Okay? So we have to decide, are they going to get this? The insurance company wants them to get a 40% reduction, okay? They want the money now. So we talked about rights. So we said that, in this case, does the insurance company have to pay them? Right? We said that the insurance company doesn't have to pay by law because they didn't find the body. Okay, what other rights do we have to think about here? Did we say in the last class? Medical service. Hmm? Medical service. People's right to shelter and medical We said that the US government has uh, signed the uh, US government has signed the UN Declaration of Human Rights, right? And also the UN has a treaty on the economic and social area. So in this Declaration of Human Rights, it's not legally binding, but it's like the US government made a pledge to provide for people's shelter and medical care, right? But the government should also do that. And in the Convention on Economic and Social Rights, the UN Con Convention on Economic and Social Rights, the US also made this kind of thing, right? It's not exactly clear that the US has to give. These kind of treaties don't see the, say the country has to give everybody a house with five bedrooms, right? It just says that they are going to provide shelter for everybody, right? It could be a homeless shelter or anything, right? Uh, what are the rights do we have here? Hmm? Profitable. So the company has the right to make a profit. Or the right to run a business, right? So then we need to Think about this. So what do you think is stronger on the right? Law. You think the law is strongest? The insurance company don't have to pay the woman yet? Right? They might have to pay after two years. You think that's stronger? Okay, so we're looking at another conflict between what's better for society, which may be that the victims of the hurricane, including this lady, get their entitlements, right? Even if we can't find the bodies. But on the other hand, the insurance company has the right, according to the law, not to pay yet, because they didn't find any body. We explained in the last class there have been some fraud cases in the past where people said they were missing, but they weren't really missing, right? So what are our options? We are Peter. What are our options? Option one. Uh, 
Anybody tell me some options? Two, three. Do what the insurance company says. Do what the insurance company says. So pay the family 40% less. Now, right? Okay, so they get, they get money, but they get 40% less. That's the deal the insurance company is offering. Because the insurance company knows, in two years, probably I have to pay. They, you know, if there's no body after two years, then I have to pay the money. Okay? So I, I can pay now, but lose 40%. Maybe the woman and the boy really need the money now, so they don't have much choice, right? What's another option? We can get 40% now, or what can the family do? Wait two years. Right? So they could wait for two years with no benefits. We saw that they might lose their house. Okay? In this case. <coughs> okay? The guy maybe needs some medical treatment. Then what's another option? Okay, so Diego makes up the difference. Right? The Dago pays the 40% difference to help them. Okay, can you think of any other creative option? Discuss with your partner. Can you think of any creative option here? Do you understand creative? I think creatively is one thing we need to do, right? So think creatively, discuss with your partner. Is there another op creative option that you can make? You're faced with these choices. To solve this problem. Can anybody make a creative suggestion to solve this issue? Connect this family with Have them in another way. So take take this option or this option plus plus company contacts the NGO, right? Or makes other arrangements. To help the family. Any other? Any other? Uh, the company contacts an NGO, like a non-government organization, which will help, can help, or charity organization, right? Sometimes they have a charity organization that can give them a loan or that kind of thing, right? A special loan or. Some help. Okay. Any other creative suggestion? Yes. I don't think it's very creative, but the, um, the family gets everything they want mm. at the moment, mm. either from the company or insurance company or the government. 
So the insurance company is not going to pay them everything. They are offering 40% less. So the, we have this option here, which is the company pays the difference, right? So the company pays the extra 40%. But we already have this one. <coughs> Any other creative option? <coughs> what about the company giving a job to Mrs. Martin? Wow. Hmm? Something like that. So we could try and find some creative option, right? The company could give a part-time or could hire Mrs. Martin, right? <coughs> part-time, etc. Right? Maybe as a cleaner or anything like that if she doesn't have much skills, right? <coughs> part-time income. Okay, so then discuss uh, what you are Peter. What ethical decision are you going to make and why? So let's finish with the argument here. You can think of some more creative suggestion if you want, right? So discuss with your partner. What decision are you going to make? You are Peter from the company and here you're just going to advise the family, right? Mrs. Martin is going to listen to you, right? You can advise her, right? Take the deal with the insurance company. Don't take the deal with the insurance company. Wait for two years, right? Uh, we'll, the company will give you the money, right? We're going to give you the money. So what decision are you going to make? Discuss with your partner. Okay, so there's a question. The insurance company is offering the family 60% of the value now, right? They're not going to give you the full amount after two years. They're making a deal with you. They know you need the money badly now. So they're offering, you can have the money now, but 60%. Otherwise, you need to wait for two years. Right, then you can get the full benefits. But you're going for two years with no money. Because you couldn't find the body. Okay? So that's the deal the insurance company is offering. They're offering a 60%. Now, I was talking about the option that they will do everything at a moment, just right now. Uh, yes, but we, are not, we can't control that in this case. The insurance company has made that offer, okay. but we're Peter in the company. Right. Yeah, we're looking at the point of view from Peter's, Peter's point of view. He, could, he already negotiated with the insurance company and he failed. They are going to offer 60%. Could try renegotiating with the insurance company could be an option. He already negotiated. Seems they told him that's their final offer.
So you should have an argument if you uh, made your decision. You should have an argument, logical argument, to support your decision. The insurance company, it doesn't matter to them whether she's hired or not. From the insurance company's point of view, they have to pay the debt benefit, right, for the guy. But they don't have to pay because he, they can't find the body. But they're going to have to pay after two years, right? But the thing is, they know that the lady needs the money now, right? So she could, if she works for the company, then she could wait for two years. Or she could take the money now, whichever she prefers. But if she works for the company, she might not need the money now. She might be able to wait for two years. Or we can wait for two years, if your husband is still not here, then you get it. They know it was a hurricane, so it doesn't look like a case. It looks more suspicious if the husband just suddenly disappeared and they can't find his body. Okay, so, John, Jion, what do you think? What are you going to do? Why? Pay, pay to the family, both company and insurance company. So you're going to advise them to take the deal from the insurance company and you'll pay 40% of the difference to make sure that they don't lose their house yes. or they don't, uh, the boy has proper treatment. Yes, why did you choose this? your argument. What are you going to say? You're Peter, so you have to talk to the upper manager. The upper manager is going to already called you and told you that uh, if you look at the page, you can see that it says that uh, he, you received a phone call from your boss reminding you that we made a big loss in the hurricane, so we might go bankrupt if we pay benefits to all of the workers affected by the hurricane. So if we're paying benefits to Peter, or to the Martin family, 
Perhaps we also need to pay benefits to other workers too. Help other workers who were badly affected by the hurricane, we could go bankrupt. So you need to tell me the reason. What, why I'm your boss, right? Asking you, what's your reason for, agree, for making this decision? You have to convince me. It's the right thing to do. He was the company's long term employee. So he was working for 18 years for the company, right? Oh no, sorry, uh, Guy Martin was working for 20 years for the company, right? So, so what? Help his family. What's your reason? What does that mean? Like, what kind of reasoning or philosophy? What's your moral philosophy that he worked for the company for 20 years, right? So we should help his family. What's the moral philosophy behind this idea? Remember last time we had the ethics guy, he had five things, right? We had different philosophers who had different ideas, right? Today in crisis management we look at other ideas. Can you think of some, what idea are you going to use behind this, for this decision? principles that the ethics guy had, we saw last week. Hmm? Did anybody write down the five ethical principles <coughs> in their notes? Hi, Ethics Guy. I have a question for you. And the smart thing. Number one, do no harm. Number two, make things better. Number three, respect others. Number four, be fair. And number five, be loving. So, what kind of principles? He has his five ethical principles, right? So I'm asking you, what kind of principle or moral philosophy do you have behind your decision? What? Be loving. Number five. Okay, so you want to be loving to your employees and their families. Okay, so we can understand your argument. Okay, then uh, let's see. Wang uh, Sheiju. Yes, what about you and your partner? What did you decide to do? Option four. Yes. Why? So which one are you going to do with four? Number one or number two together with four? Except the six. Hmm? 
Number one, accept the 60% payment. And then number four, give some part-time job so she doesn't lose her home and she can still pay for the things, right? Why did you choose this one? Mm -hmm. And make a stable situation, right? Yeah. Any other anything else? What philosophy did you use for making this decision? you're being loving or considered about the American family. Yeah. Okay? In this case you're, you're trying to avoid the fact that the company might go bankrupt. So maybe as a boss I might not be that angry, right? Yeah. You're not paying me a lot of money, just giving a job, right? So uh, we can see that we can have the different solutions and the different arguments for the different dilemmas, okay? But you should have, in the, real, in the midterm you have to follow the, the way and give your moral argument, but also in the real life you'll have to make an argument, right? If you tell your boss that you want to hire the lady, right, or you want to pay 40%, you have to convince your boss. How can you convince people? By making a logical and reasonable argument, okay? You can't convince people just by saying, I want that! I want it! <laughs> right? Maybe you can convince your mother <laughs> when you're a kid, right? Buy you some cereal but in the supermarket, buy a CD. <laughs> Threatening your mother, if you don't buy the cereal, I'll shout or cry, right? But in the business, you have to make a logical and reasonable argument. So you have to get used to make a decision. You have to have some convincing. Convince the other person, right? Using some principle, some philosophy to convince the other person or logical way. Okay, so then let's. Uh, Three. Yeah? Like in, in midterm exam, if you ask us to make a segmented table like this, mm -hmm. of course there will be, will that be like, um, like, what can I say? The stakeholders are limited, right? We have to write all the names of people here, but in argument, there will not be no answers, right? The correct answer. There's no correct answer. I can't say, oh, your answer is wrong. You should have chosen option one or option two or option three, right? Just the grade on your exam is everything, right? Did you see correct, more or less what's better for society? Did you see more or less what's right, which is correct according to the rights, okay? Did you make a good list of options? If you don't make a nice list of options, then it's not you don't have a best choice, right? Then, whatever you decided, do you have a logical and reasonable moral argument to back up what you decided, right? So there is no correct answer? Yes, there's no, in this, do you think there is one correct answer in this case? That I can say, yes, this is the best thing to do, right? Do you think there is one thing that everybody agrees? Everybody agrees, yes, this is the best thing to do. Right? So, the thing is, everybody has a different moral philosophy. So it's hard to get everybody to agree, like, oh, this is exactly the best decision, right? So what I'm saying is, you have to make the dis best decision according to your moral philosophy, and you have to use your moral philosophy to back up, to back up your decision, okay? If you so, don't have a moral philosophy, then you should think about it. So for me, it's like really best decision for me mm -hmm. to argue about Miss Martin, but it's not for you, it's not... I didn't convince you, so... What's your decision? No, I mean like, maybe. Which option did you choose? Mm, wait for two years. Wait for two years? Yeah. And then help her to get some, contact some charity? No. Or homeless, just do nothing? Just do homeless. Wait for two years? Yeah. Okay, so what, why, why, you can have an argument for that, right? Why are you going to do that? Because, like, people are going to think, okay, good thing is good. Mm. But for me, like, 
by law, hmm? they didn't find the body, so why do I really have to help Miss Martin's situation? Because it's it's gonna be, it might be sound like a little bit cruel, but she doesn't have any qualification, she doesn't have any qualified um, education, but how can I let her do part-time job? Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna leave her alone, wait for two years, do whatever you want. So. Okay, um. so <laughs> that may be your moral philosophy, right? Yes, yes. Then you're entitled to your moral philosophy. You I can't say that your moral philosophy is wrong. Oh, really? Okay, can I, can I say that people who think that the utilitarian way are wrong, you're wrong? No, I can't, right? Yes. They have their own argument. Mm -hmm. So, we have to respect everybody's opinion. So, you made your argument on the right side. They made their argument on the better for society side. So, that's what happened. We have a conflict between the right, what's right's mm -hmm. side, and better for society side. Okay? Then, some people will say, well, it's better for society, I want to do that way. Right? Some people will say, no, that's on the rights. We don't have to do that. Okay? So then we can have that kind of discussion, right? You're her boss, and you tell her that. Then she has to make a better argument. The way that uh, we discussed a little bit at the end of the ethics program, about when we don't agree. We don't agree with somebody, right? We listen to them very carefully and respectfully. Listen to their point of view. And we have to be prepared to change our point of view, too. We can't be that, I take this point of view and I never change my mind, okay? If I'm wrong, if you can reasonably argue with me and show me that I was wrong, I should be able to say, okay, maybe you're right at the end, right? Maybe we should do that. So you, you two guys have to have a discussion. I'm saying, right, you're her boss and she's making the decision, right? So you guys have to have a logical discussion about that, okay? That's the next step. And you have to be able to convince her that this is, he's been working here for 20 years, we want to be loving to all our employees, right? Maybe she'll tell you that we're going to lose employees. If you are cruel to the employees, our best employees could leave the company, right? So now she's talking your language, you could make less profit in the company because of that, right? And you can tell her, but you know, that we don't, we don't have to help her, right? The government has to help her. Government has to help her if she's homeless or if she needs medical things. That's the government responsibility. Right? So I don't feel that's my responsibility. So you can go over and back. Okay? And, and in the end, we should have a kind of decision. Okay? So any more questions about that? So just we have one question here. Question number two. Discuss with your partner. Do you think that Peter is too emotionally attached to the Martin case to make an objective decision? So Peter has been working there for 18 years, and the guy who died was working there for 20 years, so they know each other, right? So do you think that Peter can make a, an objective decision? Do you understand objective? What does objective mean? Fair. Fair. Fair, right? Like fair, without... Objective means without putting your emotions involved, right? Or your situation. Just judging on the fact. So do you think that Peter can just judge on the fact, or he's going to make, let his emotions get involved? So discuss with your partner.
Hmm? You don't think he can make an objective decision? Why not? Just knowing a person for 18 years hmm. is too big for for him. So do you think somebody else should make the decision? Yes. Why? So we can understand sometimes in the company also in the real life we can have people who are not making objective decisions. They might not be the best person to make the decision if they're uh, yeah. not being objective, right? If they can be objective, then it's okay. Right? Uh, like if I were Peter, I will still want to make a decision, mm -hmm. but I would um, guarantee that it will be decision. Okay, but you still want to make a decision? Yes, like I would still want to help. You want to help the family? I see. Okay, so then uh, let's move on to talking about the crisis management. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, what is a crisis? Discuss with your partner. Or what should we do in a crisis? So, just first discuss with your partner, what does crisis mean? Could you give some example of a crisis? Product has a big problem, like what? Chemicals, leaking chemicals, that kind of thing. Can you think of any famous crises for companies? Financial. Some banks in the financial crisis, Lehman Brothers, right? Yes? <coughs> Green Air? Little. Would you say that this is a crisis <laughs> or not a crisis? <laughs> no? Crisis is a very serious thing, right? It depends on your opinion. Do you think it was a serious crisis, the peanut thing in Korean Air? Yes. For Korean Air or not? Yes. Yes, okay, then it's a crisis. <laughs> okay, any, any other examples? Oh, yes. When I got some by the board. I mean about companies. <laughs> That's a crisis for you, right? Personal relationship crisis. Relationship crisis. Yes. What about the companies? That's more just the uh, company has some inside the company crisis, right? We're talking about a crisis that affects more than people inside the company. So we're going to try and learn about how to behave or what what should we do in a crisis, right? Panic? Just panic? Yeah. Is that the answer? Yeah. <laughs> All right, don't panic. So if we don't pay attention to ethics, uh, the firm can collapse. Do you understand collapse? Yeah. <clears throat> so we want to learn, first of all, how to act in a... In a in the crisis, because if we act badly in the crisis, like we don't care, right? Then our company can have a big problem, okay? And then secondly, more briefly, we'll just learn, just review, basically, about making the ethics program so we can have a culture that is good for dealing with the crisis. So we are going to use the BP oil spill as the analysis. Okay, of this case. So here are some examples of crises, right? Union Car Car Bridge in India, it had a poisonous gas leak from its factory. Thousands of people died from the gas leak. The firm paid $470 million in compensation, and several of the top managers are in jail, right? They were convicted in court. So being the top manager,